quite yet. Don't get too excited. It's not even in the truck yet. We're back, baby. We're in the garage, and it's time to start on this TDI Tacoma swap. So, last time I did any Tacoma videos, I was finishing up the frame, and I was hoping to get more of that done. Uh, I didn't get around to it. I've been too busy all summer doing stuff in my house, stuff with the family. Um, just busy, busy working. So, now that it's the winter months, I can finally get back to chipping away at this project. And during that time frame, I actually acquired a Passat. This is a 2004 wagon. It's got the big block 2 liter TDI in it that I'm thinking about possibly using instead of the ALH that's in the 03 Jetta. Not totally sure yet. This thing's got 300,000 miles on it, but it runs like a top. Ugly, but a heart of gold. So I'm going to start by getting the engine out of this car because I already told the wife this is going to be one of those quick flip get it out of here deals. She already doesn't like seeing all these cars around, around our house. So I'm going to try and get this thing out of here as quick as I can. And all I really want is the engine and the running gear so that I can swap it later into the truck. So first let's get a look at the car so you can see what we're in for. Never pulled an engine on one of these. It doesn't look too terrible. The engine's so far forward. I mean, it's like sitting pretty much in front of the center line of the front axle. It's crazy. It's way up there, unlike the Jetta that's transverse mounted. First things first, let's start this thing up and see what it sounds like. Diesel noise, no excessive clatter or ticking, knocking, nothing like that. It's just got this kind of thump, thump, thump noise coming straight to the engine. I don't know if that's just because it's a wide open, junky air filter. But the engine itself sounds really good. Take the cover off. And it actually probably be easier to shut this thing down. Let's take a quick step back and get a bigger picture of what we're dealing with here. So this car is an 04, 300,000 miles on it. It's a rebuilt title. Somebody's already rebuilt it once. Obviously, it's got a silver front end on it. At one point, somebody had fixed it. And then another person bought it. Unfortunately, um, they only drove this thing a couple thousand miles, and they hit a deer. They tried to repair it. Uh, obviously, they didn't quite know what they were doing. They did put a headlight on it. Um, and tie wrap some things back together, <laughs> but uh, all the, they just decided, you know what, it's not for me. Let's get this thing out of here. I swoop in. I scored a pretty good deal on it, so I'm after it for the engine. But honestly, this car, the body panels and stuff are really nice. This thing's got no real big dents or damage on it anywhere. No rust inside. You know, it's got. It's dirty. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty filthy in there. But, I mean, what a nice car back in the day. This thing would have been, you know, top of the line. Heated leather seats, uh, nice surround sound system. Lots of cool features on a car that I honestly didn't think they had back in 2004. All right, let's get a closer look at what we're really after, this engine right here. So the Passat has the BHW TDI. It's a larger displacement, 2 liter over the 1.9 that's in my Jetta. These came with 136 horsepower and 247 foot-pounds of torque, quite a bit more than the ALH. Now, this engine does appear to be in good running order. It's had the tying belt done at some point. As far as I can make out, that sticker says it is due at 307,000, which is maybe six, 7,000 miles away. Let's take a little peek under this cover and see. Oh, where's the other clip? There it is. Okay, let's pull it off and see wow <laughs> jeez that I don't think it's going to make it another 6,000 miles maybe, maybe I'm wrong I don't like to gamble like that but I'd say it's got 6 or 7 more minutes in that belt it is looking pretty ratty um, yeah but it does run and I'm glad I got to hear it run when I bought it um, the camshaft on these engines tends to have issues if you do not maintain the oil properly, doing your service animals and the intervals and the correct type of oil. As far as I can tell, it runs smooth and quiet, doesn't seem to have 
a lot of issue. I didn't get to drive this thing too far because it does have some other issues, but it does drive, which is a big deal because there's quite a few of these facades that the transmissions are completely out. And sometimes you can, you know, score a deal on the whole car just because of that. Um, getting a closer look at this side, I can see that this valve is melted. I'm not really sure what that valve does. Haven't looked into it, <laughs> but it's gone. And for what I'm going to do with my truck swap, I don't plan to use that anyway. You can see some DIY EGR cooler block off plates. I have the cooler. It came with the car. It looks to be in good shape. I don't really plan to put it back on. I know most people do not. Uh, it has, as far as I can tell, the previous owner told me that cartridge has been replaced since they owned it. I don't know if it just completely went to crap. If it was leaking bad, I don't know what the deal was, or if they were just shooting in the dark. But they did replace that. Uh, this side of the engine does have a lot of kind of wetness and soot down it. Maybe uh, we had an exhaust leak here. Uh, I'm not sure. I did clean a lot of it off. It could be the tandem pump back there was leaking some stuff down as well. Not sure. Um, it has a crappy intake. Air filter on it there. It also has... Tons of electrical tape wrapped around all the turbo fittings. I don't know if they were trying to seal off leaks. Really don't know. Um, it also has quite a few, well, I'm guessing it's going to have quite a few codes in it because the check engine light is on. I have not scanned it yet. I'm going to do that before I pull the engine just so I know what it's doing now before it's removed. And then later when I put it in or whatever, however I end up putting it in my truck, I'll know, you know, where it was and where it's at now. Now that dipstick has been broke off they shoved a bolt in there i guess to keep most of the dirt out <laughs> oh man those plastic dipstick tubes they're cheap you should just change them but i guess you know do what you got to do we got a new alternator on here um other than that i mean there's not really much that you can see here's a quick look inside the car um i actually haven't spent a whole lot of time in here i took the junk out but I don't plan to do a whole lot with the interior. Oh, it has a nice little air freshener. And I don't know, I know I had some lights on, so I wanted to scan it with my basic code reader just to see if I can pull anything out of it here. Um, let's see what happens. Um, I don't even know if the radio works. <laughs> didn't, didn't really do much with it. Uh, let's see here. No kidding me. Look at that. It's got a CD, now 72. And back in my day, we're at like now six. All right, let's see what we got while we're waiting. Let's see. Mm, 2004. Yep, that's correct. Okay, let's go. Oh, dang. Wow. Jamming. This sounds pretty good in here. Not bad. All right, let's see what kind of codes this thing has in it. Okay, turbo, uh-oh, boost sensor, performance range. Yeah, probably because it isn't sensing boost. There's, like, tape on all the connections. That's not making it happy. Uh, air intake temp sensor, circuit input high. EGR, oh, I wonder why, because it's gone? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, same junk. Okay, yeah, all right, well, obvious stuff. Try to do just a quick look under the car. Uh, not much to see, really. Um, pretty filthy down here, just as I thought. Uh, a lot of stuff has dripped down back behind the bell housing area. Um, I did clean as much as I could, just to try to make it a little easier on myself. Um, there's obviously some damage uh, up here from the front bumper, but the engine is fine. There's nothing wrong with the engine itself. Um, another thing, <laughs> transmission doesn't appear to have any leaks or anything like that. Uh, I don't know if that's something that I'll be able to sell to make some money back on the purchase. Do not know. But no rust on this car. I can't believe how clean it is down here. <laughs> There's a little bit of rust like on the exhaust parts, but dang. I don't know if it's just they kept this thing clean. Or are these cars usually not as prone to rust like I usually see up around the Midwest? And look at the muffler. It's like polished stainless. It's amazing. It's got a, a trailer hitch package on it. Um, I can't forget, there's like three-quarter tank of diesel in there, a little bonus, along with that CD. So 
new brake calipers in the rear, and actually the fronts are new too. So somebody was really trying to get this thing going. It'd be a shame just to throw this thing in the junkyard. Uh, man, I'm going to try to, uh, maybe I can recoup a little bit of money on this car. It's got four good tires on it. They're all different, but they have like 90% tread. So they're usable to somebody. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm done down here. Cold start video. It's about 35 degrees out. Not sure if that's smoke from sitting around forever. Doesn't smell bad. Might just be because it's cold out. Hasn't ran in a long time. Let's see if it clears up. Well, the engine warmed up and it's not really smoking at all now. So I think it was just cold out and cleaning itself out. The next thing I like to do with this car before I pull the engine out, drain all the fluids and stuff, is to do a compression test. I have a diesel compression tester kit, never used it before. I don't even know if I have the right adapter for this engine. So I need to get a glow plug out and see if I have one that will fit. Uh, for now, I am trying to get these glow plugs out. I started by, obviously the engine covers off. I reached back here, I pulled the safety lock out of the fuel injector connector, hidden under there. It came out fairly easily. Um, twist it, pull it out, try to start it, did not start. I know the injectors aren't firing, this thing's not going to try to run while I'm performing the test. I removed the fuel filter from its clamp down there so I could get access to the harness. So I was able to pull all those off and get the glow plug harness out of the way. You can kind of see the glow plugs down in there. I have no idea if these are the original ones, if they've ever been changed. I'm just slowly working on them. I can say the middle, um, middle two, Cylinders two and three are uh, came out just fine. Not a problem. Happy with those. One, a little sticky. Not liking it. I've been praying to the Volkswagen gods and adding some Croil, one of my favorite penetrants. It's soaking in there. Um, I'm kind of working it back and forth. We're going to give it a shot. <laughs> Number four as well. That one is a little bit of a, a stick and twist, as I like to call it. It's, it is loose now. So two, three, and four, I'm happy with. Number one, cross your fingers. Let's get it out of there. Nope, nope, don't like it. Oh, come on. Work it. Eat, eat, eat. Oh, come on. Nope, 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 nope. That's a stick twist. Easy. Oh. Not a good feeling. I mean, I am pulling this engine out, so... The head's likely going to come off anyways, but I really don't want to break this off. But if it's your personal car and you got to drive to work tomorrow, oh man, you better take your time. Ooh, see? Oh, big twist. Hang on. Oh, don't like it. Don't like it. Really don't like it. Oh, progress. Come on, baby. Oh, see? Come on, Croyle! Get it in there. This is nerve-wracking. Yikes. Man! What is this, holding the cylinder head on? How long is this thing? It's doing its final cries. Oh, <laughs> victory! I think we got it. Yeah. They either loosened up or the threads are coming right out with this thing. I'll get my hand in there. Oh, what's it look like? Oh, man, look at that thing. Yeah, look at all the carbon. You can see the coil wicked its way down the threads. Look at that, it dissolved, broke down that carbon. Well, it gets pretty clean now. How about that? There's a part number on it. I don't know if it's an upgraded one, original one, but it's out and I'm happy. Battery's fully charged. All the glow plugs are out. I'm just going to do a quick dry crank just to see if anything blows out of the cylinders. All the glow plugs are out. I'm really happy about that. I used a long extension and 10 millimeter socket. Good old coil. So that's finished. Now I'm going to try and use this Harbor Freight diesel compression tester kit. I uh, haven't really had much use with it yet, so it's a good time to try it out. 
It says it's supposed to fit the TDI. I've seen on the forums, a lot of people have said that the Harbor Freight kit fits the TDI. In this kit, they claim this number 10 or 12 fit it. A Volkswagen, obviously it must be an older style, doesn't fit this. Or number three, that's this guy. It does have the right threads, but from what I can tell, these glow plugs seal on the tapered seat. And these aren't long enough to do that. So I don't understand how you're gonna get a positive seal there. Um, also in this kit, this number, will be number 14 in the kit, it's basically the same fitting. If you can see, it's the same threads, same overall length and shape, but it has a hose on it, which is a little bit harder to get in there. I don't know, it's the same thing. It doesn't look like it's gonna seal quite properly. I don't know. So these are my ALH glow plugs that I pulled out and changed. You'll notice this one's actually broken. It was like that when I pulled it out. <laughs> A little scary, uh, but the engine still runs fine. Um, I thought about possibly making this into my own adapter if uh, I don't get good results. I was going to try to hollow this out and weld on a tester. I don't know if I can pull that off or if i got to order something. For now, I'm just going to try what other people have said works and run this Harbor Freight kit. We'll see what kind of numbers we get. I got that number three adapter threaded in. Uh, I basically snugged it down on the threads. I guess it's the thread seal that's really doing the sealing, not so much the tapered seat um, like the glow plug would do. And then I couldn't quite finagle this 90 degree down way in there. They do have a uh, straight extension. So I added that and now I can hook this to here and I can put my gauge on here. So I don't know if there's a better way to do it. That's gonna hopefully work for me. Let's crank it over. And let's see what kind of compression numbers we get on cylinder one. Here we go. Well, there you have it. I um, actually went back through all my numbers again. Now i got a system, and I'm really happy. They're all around 450 PSI. It's a good, healthy engine. Still nice and warm. Uh, good ring seal, and obviously the valves, everything's uh, working quite well. Number one was a little bit lower than the rest, but I went through twice and averaged them out. So that's done. Uh, if you have the Harbor Freight kit, this will work, but like I said before, this fitting is more so sealing on the threads and not on the taper. might not be 100%, but close enough for what we're doing. Um, I found it was best to use this guy, the straight adapter, so I could get you know far enough out to hook the gauge up like this. And that was um, what worked for me on this engine. So at this point, I'm done with that. Next thing I'm going to be doing is pulling the valve cover. I just want to look at the camshaft while it's, it's not too hard to get off, just so I can look at it. Um, and then from there, I'll be pulling this thing out. I got the glow plugs back in and torqued down. Everything's back together. Just figured I'd show the, the old blow-by test with the oil cap. It is dancing a little bit, but it did blow clean off, so... Take that for what it is. All right, uh, I did a bunch of little tests on this engine, and the last thing I want to do is just get a peek at the camshaft under this valve cover. I'm going to pull this breather hose off and just start zipping out these bolts. Looks like this is mostly going to come off. I think there's anything that's going to prevent me from lifting this straight up. Curious to see what's under here. We haven't worked on a lot of these. Oh, that one's tricky. Oh man, I don't know. Wait a minute. Oh man, you can just barely get to that. That would be uh, the EGR cooler on there. That would have been a real tough one to get to. And what else we got? One here. Can't. I don't know if I can get on that one. Hang on a minute. Did I get it already? Can't see down there. Yeah, I think I did get that. Oh, there it is. Bad angle. Okay. 
Let's pull this off. Hopefully. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. Is the intake in the way? Oh, oh, oh no. Come on, I thought we could do this. Maybe, maybe not, maybe not, okay. Oh, there it is. Woo, it's snug, but it did come off. Okay, we can get a closer look at that camshaft that everybody complains about on these things. Uh, get my light. Where is my light? Okay. Wow, that thing looks good. Wow, seriously? That looks really good. I don't see anything funky going on here. I wonder if this thing's new. Or if somebody took great care of this engine. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. And again, I've actually never worked on one of these, so I I don't know what I'm getting myself into under here. But I tell you, I have worked on a lot of engines in my life and seen a lot of camshafts. That thing looks great. I have to bring in for a closer look here. Here's a closer look at that camshaft. I took a second to wipe some of the uh, oil off of everything so you can get a better look here. If this is the original camshaft with 300,000 miles on it, I mean, it looks pretty dang good. Uh, I can see now that there's a little bit of um, kind of a scuff look here on that, that lobe. looks a little bit worn. It's not bad. Um, really, this lobe, this lobe, and way in the back, right down in there, a little bit. But all the other ones look, like, really good. And almost, that's why I, when I first pulled this off, they almost look new. So other than those three, I mean, I'm quite surprised how nice this is under here. I feel a lot better about this engine and possibly uh, just using this in my truck swap. So I don't know how the buckets look down here. They're, I believe they're black nitride coated and they have black oil all over them. So it's hard to see much there without pulling the cam. Um, real happy so far between everything I found on this engine. So the next thing I'll be doing is get that cover back on just to keep everything clean. And I'm gonna start pulling this engine out of the car. Valve cover's back on, everything's all hooked back up and I thought of one more thing I'd like to do before I start pulling the engine. That is uh, to check to see if the vacuum pump even works on this engine because I didn't have power brakes. Um, so I did take a look at it visually and I found the main line off of the pump goes through this mini uh, firewall and it was unplugged. The main vacuum fitting to the booster was not even snapped in place. So I did hook that back up. I uh, started following the other vacuum lines, and I tried to compare it to the diagram. This hood, because this is a rebuild, uh, this came off a V6 all-wheel drive, so not helpful. So I went to the internet, found the proper vacuum diagram for this engine, and I followed the lines down. I found uh, one that wasn't even hooked up, another line that was split. So I went ahead and got my uh, vacuum pump, and I, I hooked everything up properly. I checked for vacuum, and it's holding vacuum just fine now. So I have a little vacuum gauge here. I'm gonna start the car and just see what kind of vacuum that uh, tandem pump, the vacuum pump in here is pulling. Just so that I know it's doing something now before uh, I take this engine apart and I can't run it anymore. We'll start it up and see what we get. All right, so this line goes to the pump, we'll pull it. I'm going to hook into it. And it looks like it's pulling about, wow, 20, 28 inches, 29. That's great. So it is working just fine now. I think I'm going to take it for a, one more rip down the drive to see if it will make any boost.
Well, that was a struggle, but I got the front end off the vehicle and now I have access to everything under the hood and the engine bay here. So I went ahead and labeled all the electrical connectors I can get to now because I don't work on these enough to just look at them and tell you what they go to. So that's going to help me out in the future. I also took a bunch of pictures of stuff, different angles to also help me remember how things go back together. Uh, as I took this apart, I was able to, you know, find out what more was going on with this engine. And it turns out that everything was leaking boost on this engine. I wonder why it wasn't making any power. The intercooler was cracked. had a big old chunk missing out of it. Um, all the intercooler piping was leaking pretty much. So, uh, and of course, I mentioned before that this uh, boost solenoid, the N75 valve, was also not plumbed in correctly. So, uh, I think that the previous owner was really struggling to figure out what the heck was going on. And it was... a compound problem lots and lots of things need to be fixed to make it work um i'm happy with it now i got um a good idea of what's going on with it and now i can start working on pulling the engine out of the car Well, that was less than enjoyable, but the engine is out of the car and on a stand, ready to be torn down. Um, the car likely is going to get stripped for anything valuable. I doubt I'm going to find any diehard Volkswagen guy in town that wants to buy anything off of this. So I'll see what I can get off it, anything that I might be able to recoup. And then after that, just off to the scrapyard it goes, get it out of here, get some more room back in the garage, make the wife happy. Uh, next video, I'm going to be tearing this thing down. We'll see what the good, the bad, and hopefully no ugly that we find in this. I can also start putting together a build plan on what I want to do with it. So we'll catch you in the next one.